Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for sticking around for the final talk of the session. And welcome to Clever Planets. So what's a Clever Planet? Clever Planet stands for Cycles of Life Essential Volatile Elements in Rocky Planets. It's a project where I am acting as the PI, uh, which is centered around the central question about how to acquire, sustain, and nurture life essential uh, chemical ingredients on the surfaces of rocky planets. It's a project that got funded, similar to the previous speaker, as you heard, through the NAI CAN 8 call back in 2017. It got funded last year. So we are basically one year into, uh, into the project. Uh, so we started with the theme of origins and cycles, but then someone at NASA right after we got funded asked me, oh, what's the name of your team? And I'm like, well, I, I don't really have a team name. So I tweaked with our uh, title of our project and came up with this name, Clever Planets, Cycles of Life Essential Volatile Elements in Rocky Planets. Um, questions remain the same. And it's, um, it's an active uh, project where you can visit us at the cleverplanets.org website and follow our uh, research activities. Uh, it's a research topic that we embraced as an interdisciplinary team of scientists, um, including myself. It's 11 co-investigators and PI and several collaborators. Some of you are uh, here in the room. It spans across at least five institutions, including Rice University. And you see all the co-investigators other than myself up here on this slide. Uh, so we are basically taking the approach of tracking the conditions of chemical habitability for our own planet across all the solar system bodies, as well as going beyond the solar system and for exoplanets. Uh, we are trying to understand what's the conditions of chemical habitability going by the initial discovery of uh, characterization and discovery of planets outside the solar system, then understanding the origins of key elements of life and where that occurs in the protoplanetary disk. And then as the planets form from planetesimals to planetary embryos and larger planets, uh, how does the evolution of young planets affect the availability of these elements? And then finally, once the planet forms, what type of geological processes in the early, uh, at the infancy of the planet's history, how they shape the availability of these bioessential elements on the surface of the planet. So our, our overall project is sort of divided into five themes. Uh, theme one, understanding the origin of all the life essential volatile elements as well as phosphorus in the rocky planet forming regions. Uh, theme two is delivery and loss of these volatile elements as well as phosphorus to and from the rocky planets and uh, during planet formation. Theme three, how these elements get distributed in the early differentiation of rocky planets during core formation, during magma ocean processes, during magma ocean atmosphere interactions. And then theme four, once you have a solid planet that you form that is made up mostly of rocks, how does the geologic processes, including uh, heavy bombardment, impacts, tectonics, or lack thereof, magmatism, all of these processes impact the essential elements and their availability on the near surface environment. And then finally, if you have different planetary conditions, if they supply these elements in different rates and different quantities and different ratios on the surface environment, can the hydrothermal, take, uh, hydrothermal environment take advantage of these different ratios of elements and in certain cases turn them into prebiotic molecules of relevance for life, and in other cases probably they cannot. And how would that trade-off play off? That's kind of the theme five. So going a little bit more deeper into the themes, um, before I do that, I'll, I'll outline sort of our team constitutes a ra large range of interdisciplinary expertise. It starts from astronomy, astrophysics, um, earth and planetary sciences, including petrology, high temperature geochemistry, geodynamics, fluid dynamics, low temperature geochemistry, and then all the way to atmospheric science and organic chemistry. In terms of the tools or data sets or the approaches we are taking, they are listed to the right. We will make, we'll be making new observations of the planet forming regions outside our solar system, basically formation of planets in action, uh, so that we don't have to rely entirely on the objects that we have in our solar systems. We can actually see where these elements actually reside in the protoplanetary disk, in the other solar systems. So we'll have theory about coming from astrophysics of planet formation. We'll have lab experiments from the petrology sides as well as impacts and hydrothermal processes. We'll have geochemical analysis, in, including uh, experimental analysis, analysis of hydrothermal fractionation, isotopic fingerprints, and then also we have a fair bit of modeling component of dynamical climate modeling, magma ocean modeling, and geochemical modeling. 
Theme one, again, it's the origin and budget of life essential elements in the planet. It's headed by Andrea Isela and John Skrall at Rice University. We are asking questions such as, what are the characteristics of the environment in which rocky planets form? Where do various life essential elements actually reside? What's the interaction between the planets and the parent star? Uh, and what are the characterization of the nearby protoplanetary disks? And especially paying attention to where do life essential elements actually reside as you radially drift away from the central star. Are they always concentrated farther away? Are they concentrated nearby? Or are they oscillatory and so on? Paying particular attention to the emission lines of gaseous molecules and ions and where exactly they reside in the disk. Theme two is about delivery and loss of these life essential ingredients uh, during accretion process, during uh, early stages of planet building process. So what are, for example, the expected bulk composition of the planetary embryos? Uh, what are the role of giant impacts in large planetary systems in affecting or, or destroying or potentially even delivering these life essential elements? What's the, for example, role of radial drift in the solids in the disk? So what are the dynamics of the disk processes and how they, in certain uh, planetary systems, how they, how they, in certain solar systems, potentially can keep the elements where they should belong. In other, in other cases, probably they may not be able to uh, keep them in the, in the regions of interest. What are the roles or presence of giant planet migration, for example? So, for example, in our solar system, we think uh, migration of Jupiter in and out of the system had a huge role in delivering of water into the inner solar systems. Well, is that a requirement? Is, do we need solar systems to have that type of giant planet's presence, as well as migration, to keep the delivery of the life essential elements? So we'll be tracking about or asking about these questions under theme two. Theme three is about uh, distribution uh, of life essential elements during sort of core mantle atmosphere differentiation, headed partly by me, as well as in collaboration with Pidram Hassan Zade, um, Hilke Schlichting, and so on. We are asking how do these elements uh, get redistributed as the planet is maturing, not just accreting, not, not just you are bringing them together, but you are also differentiating at the same time. Core is forming, mantle is forming, eventually crust is forming, and how are these elements getting redistributed? Uh, so once we have ways of setting up the budget of these life essential elements in the major reservoirs of the differentiated rocky planets, then we are asking the questions, well, how would the later processes shape them and make their availability sustain or potentially sometimes destroy them or, or obliterate, them, obliterate them from the surfaces of the planet? Uh, how, in, uh, how and in what form the abundances of these key ingredients are released and sustained at the young planets? So sort of within the first billion years of uh, planet's history. And once you do that, so we are going to pay attention to magmatism, tectonism, impact processes, and so on. And once you do that, whether or not abiotic processes can produce relevant precursor molecules based on what is made available by endogenic processes. So in sort of theme four is divided into several sub-themes. So we are looking at, for example, what's the role of magmatism? What's the role of deep versus shallow melting? What's the role of intrusive magmatism versus extrusive magmatism in, in delivering life essential elements to the surface environment? What's the impact of reduced versus oxidized mantle, again, in making uh, availability of these life essential elements? Uh, and then finally, what's the role of uh, sort of uh, climate tectonic interactions. So we know in our planet probably plate tectonics started fairly early on and that plate tectonic recycling process was essential in sort of maintaining the budgets of life essential ingredients at the surface. But is plate tectonics necessary for uh, creating conducive environment for emergence of life? Uh, if you didn't have plate tectonics, if you have sluggish tectonics or, or, or uh, stagnant lead type of conditions, what would be the mode of weathering, erosion, mountain bindling, and feedback of that climate to the tectonic mode? Uh, so that would be kind of explored uh, under theme 4B. Uh, we will be also looking a lot into impact processes. Is impact always a bad thing for uh, sustaining life essential elements? Or can impact even create new pathways of releasing life essential elements? Uh, so that will be done primarily led by Sarah Stewart at UC Davis. We'll be doing experiments as well as theory or modeling work in terms of how do volatile bearing phases decompose during impact, how these impact uh, processes uh, release life essential elements, and so on. And then finally, in theme four, that, that's probably the part that overlaps mostly with the, what you heard from uh, Karen in the previous talk, that can you create or combine these life essential elements in a hydrothermal environment in a way so that in certain cases you will get prebiotic molecules that are of significance for life. Uh, and that will be done um, 
led by uh, John McCollum at UC Boulder, as well as uh, Lawrence Young, looking for potential isotopic signatures that you might be able to see, both in terms of mass dependence, stable isotope fractionation, as well as clumped isotope processes that you might be able to probe as a biosignature. Uh, finally, coming to several opportunities, um, we are, the Clever Planets team is one of the major teams as part of one of the main research coordination network uh, called Nexus, or Nexus of Exoplanetary System Science. Uh, so under that, we have, uh, we are listed as one of the teams that can host um, NASA postdoctoral fellows. So that call is open twice a year. Uh, so anybody interested in planetary in role of life essential elements recycling or cycling uh, should be looking into that. Uh, on top of that, we have at least four or five different postdoctoral positions directly funded through our program. Uh, we have graduate students and summer internships. And at around the same time at RICE, we also now have an NSF REU site uh, titled Planetary Habitability Over Space and Time, which can also bring in undergraduate students, which we actually haven't much about. So they can also get involved through this independently supported program. So overall, the program is for five years. We are one year into the program so far, uh, funded by NASA, NSF, and RICE. Uh, and there are lots of opportunities for collaborations and um, getting integrated with the RCN through Nexus. Thank you so much. So thank you very much. Are there any questions? Okay, everyone's focused on the poster session. <laughs> um, then let's thank Raj again.